Welcome, it is Tuesday, June 6th, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how we do customer interviews. I'm going to be interviewing a customer live on Zoom. We're going to be logging onto that call now in just a moment, and I'm gonna talk about why we're doing customer interviews and why you should aim to do these in your business as well. So I noticed recently in our community, one of our clients, John Livden from Norway, he is a leadership coach. Uh, essentially with a twist and we've helped him put that twist on his marketing some very interesting angles and approaches i noticed he's been getting thousands of leads so i decided to jump on zoom and basically interview uh interview john now there's a few reasons that we're doing this um i want to understand the success factors i want to understand what it was like for john to come through our coaching program to identify if there are any opportunities to improve i also want the interview material to be able to give it to some of our early customers who are in their initial stages, who maybe are only a few weeks into the process to give them guidance and to give them motivation that they are going in the right way. The interview will also highlight some of the unique value and benefits that John experienced inside of the interface program that for outsiders might be hard for them to imagine or realize without actually purchasing. So customer interviews can be brilliant for from a research perspective to help you improve your service, help you improve your product, help you improve your marketing, and also for testimonial content. I hope that we are going to be taking some testimonial content out of the interview now we will publish the full interview um but i'm hoping to also take some clips from this and use it as customer testimonial um information that can be shared with our email list that can be put on our website eventually and usually when you offer to interview one of your customer base to learn a little bit more about their business you're also giving them some exposure people do like talking about themselves and their own businesses usually so reaching out to your happy and successful customers to interview them is a great move you should also do this with the customers that maybe aren't so happy where there have been some problems with delivery or maybe with the product because you can also learn from those experiences and use that to reshape um, your product or platform or whatever it is that you are building now just a little bit more of a general update um, from inside interface Things have been going very well in the business. If you've seen our last episode, we're really busy executing on our six week plan to become scale ready. That plan is going quite well behind the scenes. And I think next week, I'm going to give you a look inside that and give you an update as to the progress. And this week, I just don't have time to do it. So I decided let's uh, go behind the scenes and look at our customer research and interview process for improving ourselves, improving our company, keeping our customers happier and collecting awesome testimonial content. I'll th I think you'll see from the format of this interview, you will gain tips on how to interview your own customers and how to make um, great case studies. So without further ado, let me log on to Zoom right now because I think we're coming up on time. I'm due to chat with John now any moment. So let's go and do that. I'll see you on Zoom. So I wanted to kick off, John, by asking you to just, you know, for the benefit of people who don't know you, to describe who you are and what your business is. And I'm going to, if it's okay, I'm going to jump in and ask some, hopefully some some intelligent questions to try and pull out some of the uniqueness that is in there and yes, that's great. make it an interesting conversation. Yeah. So I'm John. I'm 55. I'm from Norway. I'm living on the west coast of Norway, uh, a little bit south of Bergen. And I've been a leader since I was uh, a young boy. And uh, I just did some calculations here. It's, I'm approaching 40 years uh, as a leader now. And for almost 25 of them, I've been working with the training, the uh, education, the uh, the coaching and the, the, the uh, of leaders in different situations. Uh, firstly, in the Norwegian Navy, where I worked at the Naval Academy. And since 2005 in my own company. So I have a small consulting company working mainly with leaders and leadership teams. Hmm. Fantastic. What would you say makes the business unique? And if you had to give people an aha, an aha moment out there, what do people not know about leadership, but really should know? Well, well, you know, uh, I think it was uh, General Norman Swartzkopf that said it's leadership is a little bit like pornography. You know, I can't define it, but when I see it, I know it's there. You know, I know what it is. And also leadership is a topic that has, it's very well, there are so many articles and books always introduced every new year. There's a new flavor of the, the month or of the year, but there is also some kind of significant uh, 
um, concept that has been into leadership uh, for forever. And I think a lot of people get a little bit lost when it comes to becoming the leader they are. And what they do is actually they are they're grinding on. They do what, whatever they can with what they have. And unfortunately, a, not, a lot of leaders are not very well educated because a very normal process in Norway, at least, and I think it's the, the, the same all over the planet, is that if you are really good at something, for instance, you're a good engineer or a good doctor or a good uh, plumber or what you are, you tend to be promoted. And then you are into a completely new game where it's not only the professional you that is in focus, but it's also you as a leader. And I think what people, uh, where people really miss the mark is that it doesn't help just to grind on. And people find themselves in this hamster wheel of tasks and priorities and deadlines and working very hard. And we can see that uh, that a lot of managers and leaders on all levels in organization tend to be really exhausted to a point where it actually, it takes its toll when it comes to being present where you are, uh, being present together with the people around you, uh, your colleagues, your, your your subordinates, but also people, important people in your life. Mm. So, so a lot of leaders are really gig. stressed out. Yes. So what's your market? And I know that we did some of this work uh, at Interface to help pull out what is unique. Because often when we talk about, you know, when we talk to a business, and we ask them, well, what are the things that are unique about you? Or what are the things that help you stand out in your market? Usually, it's a long list of things. And it's kind of an exercise to go through that list of things and try to figure out, sort the wheat from the chaff and say, well, what is unique? And what's not? What, is, what, could, be, what could be said by your competitors, realistically? And if it could be said by your competitors, if it could be said by someone else, it's probably not worth saying. So what is the unique angle here? And what is the absolute one thing that makes you stand the, out? I think the unique angle of the way we are working in my company is that for us, leadership is a very practical thing and it's a very personal thing. So it's very much about the person, the leader, him, him or herself. And I think a lot of the, the our competitors are focusing more on generic leadership skills and this model and that model, but we are honing very much into the internal life of the leader because it's about them, their behavior, their uh, feelings, their attitudes, their, their, their way of expressing themselves and working together with people. And also, I think what's unique about the way we are uh, working is that we, we really get close because we have... A, we have an online program and we, we take four uh, classes of leaders, small classes, uh, maximum 12 people in each class, through a six months pro, uh, process where we actually we meet weekly in uh, different forms. And they are actually training and practicing their leadership behavior in their own context with their own people and their own tasks. And, and the, the, the I think some of the unique ability here is that we create in these groups a very, very uh, um, <laughs> uh, fertile ground for development and a very high level of psychological safety uh, and, and uh, being together with leaders from different companies, you are not attached to them in the same way as your colleagues. I think that's the, really the X factor of what we're doing. Fantastic. You have a, you have a great product, a great program with clients that get fantastic results. One of the main challenges that businesses face is they are experts at what they do. They have fantastic products and services, but sometimes getting the outside world to see that and to, you know, to stop and take notice and give that company five minutes to really understand what they do, that can be difficult. That's that, want... that can be that can be really difficult. And I think for us, <clears throat> up until the pandemic strike, uh, we run a, ran a local program in the, in the, the city of Bergen. We had uh, people from the local community coming to our courses and our programs. And the challenge, of course, when everything shut down, we had to reinvent ourselves and go all digital. So, so uh, marketing is a big challenge, and sales is another big challenge because you need to be able to get uh, in front of the right people. You need to be able to connect with them in a in, in an intelligent way, and you need to be able to convert them from from prospects to customers. 
And of course, uh, doing a little bit of the math, you know, we went all into webinar, webinar funnel marketing in, in, the, in the autumn of, um, of 2020. Uh, and um, I think since then we spent uh, more than 60,000 US dollars on Facebook ads. And, and, uh, and what we can see over the, 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 the period, and then we were talking about the cost per lead uh, in average over that period, around 11 US dollars per email address. Uh, and also we spent a lot of time together with the prospects, uh, working with them. And uh, however, a lot of those uh, conversations didn't lead to anything because it was not the right people who were targeted. You know, we had a lot of people really wanted to have a conversation with me, really, were, they were really into leadership, they really wanted, but they were not in our main target group. And that was a challenge for us. So I think in retrospect, we wasted a lot of time and money on, on, on um, of course, a lot of interesting com um, conversations, but uh, the challenge has been to actually get um, connected to the right people. And, uh, and for, for us now, this is the way, um, as you know, Patrick, I, I was quite early when I, when I signed up for, for, for what became Interface. Um, and, and, I, I, and I saw the opportunities in this uh, way of working with, with, uh, with the video quiz funnels early. Unfortunately, I waited probably too long before I picked it up, but I'm really... No. Well, yeah, I think just for, for people who are watching, John was one of our early funders. So we ran almost like a Kickstarter, except it wasn't on Kickstarter. And uh, in, a, in a previous episode of Inside Interface, I talked about how we funded the business using customer finance, uh, customer finance acquisition. And John was actually one of the people who signed up to buy a lifetime license of Interface, which back then may be a little bit of a risky move, but long term, very smart move because people are paying thousands per year depending on what plan you're on, you can get it a lot lower now. But you've said you probably saved yourself a bunch of cash from signing up in 2021. But it wasn't until 2022 that we started working together. So you approached us, or we approached you, I can't remember which way we connected on a call. And we discussed helping you with your interface implementation, not just giving you the software, but helping you to sharpen up your communication strategy, to pull out your unique differences, to develop your aha moment, your belief shifting statements, the way that you're going to communicate, the way you're going to position the call, how you're going to structure all the questions and answers. And we worked together for, I think, a little bit over 12 weeks. It ended up maybe being about 15 weeks in total. What was that experience? Well, that like? was super frustrating for me because... Uh... <laughs> Of course, and I, it also shows in my in my in my uh, economic records because kind of my business went down, and I had to put a lot of work into this. But um, um, it was good to be kept uh, accountable through a process of 12, 15 weeks. Um, uh, it was uh, good to have a structure where we worked uh, through the, the workbook and develop these different stages in the process uh, until making the the, uh, the 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 quiz finally and i think um uh, what really was the breakthrough for me was when we together sat down and kind of <laughs> pushed through on making the, the the quiz and then i have to admit and i i really have to admit that after that i was again a little bit um uh not worried but i was uh, uh, thoughtful again is this really going to work Am I really getting the right in in, in front of the, the the right people? Will this process convert? Uh, uh, and I was on the brink actually of saying I move on to something else, another shiny object, you know. Uh, mm, uh, danger. <laughs> and uh, and then I'm really glad that uh, that uh, uh, after a discussion in my team, we decided to okay, we we have to test this. We have put so much into it, we need to test it. So. Fast forwarding um, until May 11th, when we started our um, uh, uh, our um, testing phase of this, and we went in with a very modest uh, uh, amount every day, uh, and we saw a trickle of uh, leads coming in, and we have now uh, upped that a little bit, and we will do that until June 15th. And the result so far is... <laughs> Quite astonishing, I have to say. Both on, uh, of course, there are things we need to 
probably tweak and to revise and and that's also the way of actually iterating to towards something that would be better um that but but we have we have we have actually generated since may 11th more than 1200 leads for uh, through wow. our uh, through our funnel and, congratulations and uh, based on that we have booked so far um 11 12 conversation uh, conversations and i'm now in the process of uh, of working with those uh, prospects that we have been talking with and i can see the lead quality has increased dramatically we can talk a little bit more about how we did it in the quiz and things like this but but uh, but uh, and also i can see that that uh, people are uh, entering the conversations with a, a much clearer mindset of what is this going to be about and yeah i'm quite uh, optimistic now because we are generating leads at one tenth of our average lead uh, generation cost, wow. and we we are so so we are actually saving ninety percent of our ad cost so far. Um, sorry, I just have to to. Um, uh, okay, um, we we are saving uh, almost ninety percent of our, our of our uh, lead cost, which means that those 90% can be spent or invested in other projects or other way uh, way of working with our with our uh, material and and doing that so it also frees up uh, quite a lot of liquidity for me yeah well so um lead volume massively up lead quality up and lead cost down 90% these are like the three performance indicators yes uh and and uh, the way we have done that in our quiz uh, basically to tell a little bit about my quiz it's about th that one thing that keeps you from being a good manager or well, basically i through a few questions i divide them into three categories what type of leader are you and i have an analytic leader and a visionary leader and a cooperative leader and and um, which is uh, the the largest part in norway at least uh, in our culture and then I've been working into personality and behavior for so many years that I know that I can, in the result video where I present uh, their results and talk about that one thing, and I can come back to that one thing, uh, um, um, uh, then I can also give them input regarding what types of challenges do they have. So I can connect that even better to, 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 uh, um, uh, to them, yeah. That's fantastic. And on the phone, John, have you been able to, I guess the prospect has already admitted they have a challenge or they've got this issue or that issue. Are you using interface data on these calls that you're having with people so that you can say, I see that you said this or I see that you said that? Well, so far, I haven't been doing that. I, I we, do, we, we, use, we do use a lot of automation. So they kind of get into my CRM system, our CRM system. I know I have the data and I could draw on that. But uh, I haven't done that yet. That was actually a good, uh, a really good idea. So perhaps I have to go back and and iterate a little bit there. Uh, um, I have been having these conversations with the prospects for quite a lot of them for for a while, and and uh, uh, so I have kind of a structure in place. Um, uh, and of course, what I learned through you and your team in in the interface has also been helpful as long as other sources I've been kind of drawing on so yeah uh, but but um, still there is a challenge of course to, uh, that remains and that is that even though they are the right prospects for us they are not necessarily the decision makers so that will probably be the next step to see how can we get even closer to the decision makers and we I think we will have to to perhaps we will, we will test out another quiz uh, on that or another, another lead. Well, yeah. I suggest you read uh, Challenger Customer. The Challenger Customer is about how to identify the mobilizers inside organizations, teaching, tailing, tailoring, and equipping so that you can take the mobilizer and equip them to build consensus inside the buying committee and with people that you don't ordinarily have access to. It's like hacking into the company, not yeah. you know actually hacking into the company technically, but it's psychologically hacking into the company. Like a spy would be in a foreign government, you have your spy working in this company, and they're building consensus for you. That's a that's a hell of a book on how uh, to yeah, do that. And I can see that also. We have you know we have had over the years now. The, uh, we are now starting class number twenty one in August, 
And uh, over those uh, years, since 2009 with the program, I've had a lot of advocates in companies that have kept sending uh, us uh, uh, participants. So this is a part of a larger kind of scheme where we also work, of course, with nurturing. And I think that's also a very important uh, thing to talk about because I think when you, you know, some um, entrepreneurs can come a little bit out of desperation. I really need those leads and I need I really need them to buy from me now. Uh, um, and of course, uh, perhaps 3% of those people who actually opt in, they are in buying mode. Yeah. And the other, the other 97% is not in the buyer mode. So how can I, and I think I've learned over the years that the value of nurturing a long-term relationship with with the, the prospects uh, is very important. And it is I, very important. Yeah. So so yeah. and the way we have done it is, uh, and I, I you know, I have been 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 mad at myself many times that why didn't I start list building earlier? I even had yeah. a list building mechanism in place in two thousand and five, but I didn't kind of start working strategically with it until um, um, yeah. Um, 2019, 2020. And I can see now that our weekly newsletter that goes out and the other activities that we do that actually provides a lot of value for our customers and our prospective customers has, uh, has helped. People know who we are. Yeah. That's a, that's a really interesting, John. I think a lot of people are in the same boat as you, uh, and I'm in that boat as well. Like I, I, I wish I started list building, you know, years ago. I knew about it, but of course, I've had some different businesses operating in different markets, so it's kind of been hard to take that list with me. Um, but something that I wanted to add there about nurturing that I think it's important to say for for you and for the others that might be listening is when we go about nurturing and we should nurture 80 percent of the revenue potential comes 90 days into the relationship that's not like on day 90 everyone suddenly converts that means like some point after day 90 that could be like four years into the future who knows when we look back on our, our facebook ad roi let's say for interface the ad dollars that we spent last year a lot of that's converting this year so sometimes when we have like very short um time horizons and we expect short-term results like some of the early stage entrepreneurs john that you were talking about it can kind of get you into trouble of making very short-term decisions and thinking very tactically and kind of chasing your tail a little bit so yeah long-term thinking when it comes to nurture though one of the key mistakes people make is feeding the content monster okay so they, they they're like okay well if i'm going to nurture i need to produce content so that's like a given and that content cannot be i can't keep sending the same video over and over again or people are going to think i'm crazy um so what they do is they make different videos on different topics broadly that is okay but what what ends up being missing from a lot of the nurture content is that the content is not thematically linked and it doesn't lead prospects down a path an ever-increasing path of thinking differently about their problem and realizing that they need to change their ways yeah. And move in a new direction so this kind of comes back to the idea john of the aha that we helped you create inside the 12-week program and i think the 30 second version of your aha was uh well, can we well, remember the, the three second one the second one is actually yeah leadership is an inside job and if you're not willing or able to do the inside job you will stay in the hamster wheel forever so, so that's that's and also being in that state uh, where you are so busy and you are so cramped and so crammed uh, is it, it, there is there is no uh, development there, and then it's of course the, the the when you come out on the other if you're taking the other pill if you're taking uh, you know the red and the blue pill we discussed that you you come out with more purpose. You come out with with uh, with less work because you are mainly working now or more working now through your people as a leader, and you are focusing on the most uh, on the broader on the on the bigger picture on the uh, and it frees up a lot of time uh, for them to actually lead because a lot of leaders are not leading; they are kind of administrating or doing the job themselves. So, so um, I think that's a, a part of my aha. Uh, at least. that's that's the, the the core insight so then i think look the best way for you to nurture these people is over a long time horizon um 
and when you're producing slightly different pieces of content on different topics, what's really missing in a lot of cases is contextualization of why that matters towards the aha or how that matters towards the insight. So every time you teach something, it, it, it might appear random at first, but in every video and every email, what's missing for most businesses is they don't contextualize it within the insight. So you need to be really saying at the end of every email, at the end of every video, why am I teaching this today? Even though this is, seems like a kind of a, a random topic or a topic that's over here, I'm teaching this guys because leadership is an inside job and keep reminding them of leadership as an inside job. They're just going to hear it again and again and again and again and again. This is the steel thread that kind of goes through your entire content marketing strategy. So you're teaching them different things, but because you're connecting it back to the insight continually, unrelentlessly, yeah. it's continually causing them to question the current way of, of doing things. Definitely. Really, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and also what, what we have done uh, in my team the last months, uh, we have been producing interviews with, uh, with um, that's, that's uh, we're talking about the content monster. You know, our product, our service, it's a leadership program. And I can tell people a lot of how, how good it is, but it's much stronger evidence when uh, our participants share their learnings, their insights. And so, so what we do, we produce one to two articles every month uh, that goes out but but it also uh, we also have integrated of course the we we did a restructuring of, of our website a small one we put uh, the, the the quiz more front and center um, um uh, and and we also uh, we also did a, a few other tweaks that actually brings people more specifically into the funnel we want them to go into and and uh, and also we have um, when it comes to nurturing leads. Of course, I think uh, when you have the interest of a person, the, I've taken this quiz, I get my results, uh, and I'm now interested in this topic. So we 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 very quickly, uh, even the same day, we give them uh, the first email, and uh, and and then over the next uh, three days. So that's day zero and one and two and three, we have made tailor made content with short emails and, uh, and based on the formula of, of short personal and expecting a reply, uh, the spare uh, concept you thought was about. Uh, uh, and and uh, um, so, so there is a nurture sequence taking place. And we also want to, we, because I think when you have a business running and there is a lot of moving parts, it's, I think you fall down to your structure. So I think it's helpful if you have the possibility to, to automate some of this for instance, reminding yourself that at least four times a year, I would send out the nine word email to my prospect list. Uh, um, that could be automated based on the uh, on the point because this is a kind of a standard email. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, and it works, so it could be automated based on the point when where they actually signed up for this in the first place, and then I don't have to go and think about it. I know it's 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 a system that's working for me. Yeah. So you're building in those automations, you're starting to create a more elaborate nurturing strategy, and you're keeping the inside in mind, it, contextualizing all of your content within the inside. So it sounds like you're, you're already doing a fantastic job of that. I want to just, if I can, for a second, jump back to something that you said earlier, because I think it's interesting. And I think that a lot of entrepreneurs find themselves in this situation, myself included, where we take on big projects. And I'm in the mid middle of a huge project at the moment. And I found myself two weeks ago, massively frustrated. I was massively frustrated with myself, the process and the company, because we're trying to pull off something huge. And I just wasn't feeling good in myself because it's like sometimes when you have these different ideas and concepts, and sometimes the glue that binds them together where it all makes sense in your head, sometimes that's there. And then other days it's not because we're all human at the end of the day. Sometimes we come back after a long weekend and it's like, oh, you know, what was clear last week isn't so clear anymore. I'll talk more about that in a in a subsequent video. Um, but you mentioned the word frustration. Now, I do want to, you know, for people who are watching this, Interface does not deliver a 12-week frustration program. We try to make it as, as easy as possible. But naturally, right, John, when we're trying to reword and restructure the way that we yeah. market ourselves and communicate, sometimes that can feel frustrating. Tell us a little bit more about what that was of course, like. And also, it doesn't help that you are an old, grumpy lieutenant commander <laughs> from the Navy. <laughs> uh, no, but, you know, uh, uh, I think uh, you need to put in some effort. 
and you know that this is a 12 week program and you have to do your homework. And for many of us, that also involves that you have to put some of the other things you are doing a little bit on the back burner in order to, that, to, to make that happen. So, th so there is a tension there. And I think also there is a creative tension because you, as you said, you have to rethink and reconceptualize and, and reframe some of the things you have been doing for a while, and then you have to see it in a new context. Uh, and I, I think also some of the frustration comes, you know, I'm quite uh, um, result oriented. I want to see the results of what I'm doing, what I'm putting in. And when, when uh, and 12 weeks, it is three months, it's a quarter of a year. So, so, so it's, uh, um, uh, you, uh, but saying this, I think also it's doable. And we were also talking a lot during that period of strategizing because between the difference between making this wedding cake and uh, and planning it and making it perfect, you know, in the, your head first and trying to do everything versus the concept of actually doing something, putting it into work and evaluate what happens. So you, you described it as making cupcakes instead of wedding cakes. And for me, that was a learning point. And I think the day I sat down and said, I'm making this uh, this uh, quiz today, and I just shut the videos, which, by the way, was a genius way of doing it. And I really love the 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 interface interface uh, uh, and the way it was possible for me to kind of just shoot them from the hip and get them out there. And then I had something; I could see it, and then suddenly things fell more into place. Yeah, I remember at a point it was probably halfway through or a little bit after halfway through, you were wanting this to be, as it, as it should, as much as it can be, very impactful, close to being perfect, very compelling. And they're goals that we all have for the way that we communicate and the way that we market ourselves. But sometimes when we're trying to do too much at once, it can kind of be like a reflection point to say, okay, we're, we're trying to build a wedding cake here. We don't have the resources to build a wedding cake because I'm feeling this tension and this frustration, it's time to pull back on scope and ship on time. And what can I deliver? Like break this down in, atomically into its base components. What can I start shipping as cupcakes? And how can I embrace imperfect action and present a more stumbling version of myself so that I can get it out there, I can learn, and I can use those inputs to actually go faster and to kind of like unblock. It's almost like a constipation. I get this. Every entrepreneur gets this. We're trying to, we're working on this big release, this big launch, and it just becomes like a boiler, a boiler room, like yeah. too much pressure. And it drives us crazy. But, you know, we have been there, both of us, many times in our career as, as entrepreneurs. And I think it, this is a part of, uh, of life as an entrepreneur, the roller coaster part, where you have these, you know, these highs and these lows and, uh, and, and you're putting in a lot of effort uh, and then it even, you know, it's not always it pays off, you know, uh, yeah. and then you do, you learn something. But I think based on my, my now 18 years uh, on my own as an entrepreneur, it has been a learning process like crazy. And, and uh, I'm not at the same place. I have really had a lot of help uh, reading um, books by Dan Sullivan and, and Benjamin Hardy. Um, I'm now reading uh, the, the the 10x is uh, is easier than 2x, but there are another book I really want to mention there, and that is uh, uh, from the same authors, and that is the gap and the gain, uh, uh, and also uh, another one that is called uh, who not how, because we are Mr. Fixits or Mrs. Fixits, and we are doers, a lot of entrepreneurs, and I think also the ability to use, even if you just only have one virtual assistant a few hours a week that can take some of the load off you and create that room so that's who not how and the other one is that the the gap and the gain to be able to actually stop and look over your shoulder and actually reflect what have i actually done what have i learned what have i achieved so far because that that goal far ahead there you know world dominance or what you have as your 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 goal it that's like in horizon it's always you can be moving towards it but there will always be a gap between where we are and where we want to go and i think we oh. have to learn to live with it there's some fantastic book recommendations for people listening for myself as well i haven't read all of those i have read the um be yourself be, be your future self now yes and that was yes. i we, we talked about that before we talked and that's about that, yeah 
but the uh, the ten x is easier than two x. That is actually one that I want to read because I'm yeah. I'm hearing that again and again as a, that, as a recommendation. That's also they have been fantastic good at marketing at the moment. But I think the core of that book is I'm not finished with it. But I think it it comes down to this finding the twenty percent that you are and your unique ability. What can you? What can only you do? Or what can you do really good or the best? Uh, and being able to focus more on that. And, and and the radical part of that is actually that you have to let go of those eighty percent, which which is probably difficult, but but uh, but it's doable. Difficult to do, yeah. D- difficult to do, but doable. It it almost in a way sounds like you know another way of talking about it is the hedonic treadmill that we yeah. just constantly reset our goals and this gap, and we create like a misery that we're not achieving. But we we often don't reflect back on how much we've achieved and how far we've come. And that's something that I've been working on this year, myself personally, is um, having gratitude for all of the things that have already passed that yeah. are good and also bad because we've learned something from those and reframing failure as learning and being optimistic for the future and having that big vision, but just being thankful for what we're experiencing now, the good and yeah. the bad. And, and you know, uh, we also... <laughs> The only place I can be right here now is right here now. And if I, if my mind is always, you know, a uh, hundred miles ahead of me, uh, or always stuck in some failures or some misery in the, in the, uh, you know, it's it's on the it's outside of my. Uh, I can't actually. Um, um, uh, I can't do anything about either of those things here and now. But I can work towards. Kind of embracing the 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 the, the past and the learnings and the blessings and what's what's in there, and I can also uh, uh, picture the future and and the direction I want to go. And then, of course, if I if I go if I put myself in the goal and I do a backwards math, I can see that normally there are fewer steps than I fear, moving me from where I am to where I want to be. For me. Those steps now is actually, I have the I have the capacity in my company to uh, to to ha- run forty eight people through my program a year the way we do it now. That's four times more than we had before the pandemic. So it's a four hundred percent increase in in capacity. My team is rigged for that. I'm so happy for that. Um, uh, and also, I know if I do a few other things, I have. I don't. I can sleep really well at the night, and I have what I need, and I still have the capacity to develop further. So, so um, now it is about finding a way of consistently getting the right people in front of us, and and uh, we we interface is a an important part of that strategy for us, as well as our website, as well as our uh, social media accounts. And we are, but we are balancing it when it comes to producing a content. I do it, you know, we are producing content right now. Um, uh, and of course, this is a very, for me, this is a very easy way of producing content. So one of the things I've done in my business now is that I, because I have a large network in the, in, in the leadership world and in the business world. So every two weeks I have, uh, I invite a, an interesting a knowledgeable, um, um, thought-provoking person from my network to have a one-hour leadership conversation with me. So, so, uh, and I started this January, uh, and and this spring I've had. So I have now 10, 11 hours of content, high-quality content with interesting people for my small face uh, YouTube channel that I started a long time ago. But now it's steadily increasing month after month. And I think also I learned something about when it comes to, to uh, you know, when you have different platforms, you can also bounce people, you know, you can point them. And uh, when you build this over time, it gets easier. But I'm not producing one new article every week with a, a fantastic uh, content anymore, because I think that it's not a waste. It's interesting and it's good, but I think it needs to be, Put in the same direction that we want to go. So I'm yeah. I'm trying to do it easier for myself, and uh, the feedback is good from people. Well, it sounds like the flywheel is spinning now. That inertia at the beginning, getting things moving, is tough. It's very tough. It's uh, it's like you're trying to move heaven and earth, but the business is 
operational a number of years. You've got your content that's being produced. Your list is building. You've you've massively you've 10x your scale, and now you're 10xing your um your lead flow and while reducing your costs. So that's an amazing achievement. It's like all of these these kind of scalability projects in the company are coming together in your company to yeah, it facilitate has been a lo- growth. It has been a very long journey. And I think one of the things I had to learn that I can't be the expert of everything. You know, I can't be the the Facebook expert or I can't be the, the administration expert or the bookkeeping expert or the video expert or whatever. I need to focus on what I do best. And then I can have people in my team uh, doing what they do best. So I have a, I have my, 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 my virtual assistant. She is doing a lot of good work for us. And she, that her workload will grow as she gets to know her company better. And I can see, I can more and more delegate to her. Uh, same with, with my Facebook uh, guys in India uh, that we have been cooperating now for two, more than two years. And I know I can trust them. I know that I can just give the input and they take care of everything. And yes, it does cost some money, but yes, it takes off a lot of pressure, uh, worries, and the need of knowing everything for me. So, so yeah. Hmm. It's well worth it. On the topic of outsourcing, John, for people who are watching this, who are maybe not even an interface customer yet, but are considering becoming one from the outside, often it's hard to understand what this thing is, what kind of support you get within the program. Do you have anything that you want to share about oh, yeah. the the, co- the company, the, the support that you got, the products, yeah. anything like that? Yeah, I I I, I do want to say that uh, the the feeling after being through your uh, program with interface is community and relationship and trust, and uh, and uh, the way that uh, Lorraine, for instance, who, who is your your success, uh, what you call customer success manager has been following me up with her emails, has been both encouraging and also kind of keeping me a little bit on track. And uh, so I'm really happy. And I, I do actually, I do say, well, I've been working for many years with a lot of companies. Uh, actually, I, I, I did some math a few weeks ago and I said, because for many years I said, more than 200 companies in more than 40 industries. And then I had to, so no, it's no more than 300 companies in more than 70 industries. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, uh, with interface, I really feel that I we are on the same page. We do you are receptive when it comes to feedback, and you are delivering. And I think also the way uh, you, Patrick, are um, uh, are stepping into this as the face of interface, and uh, and the way you very openly share your own pro- uh, process with us. Uh, and uh, for instance, the the the, the school. Um, um, community that uh, you are building up now uh, and I think also it's uh, I'm I'm big fan of the way you are thinking about building a community and I think also for other entrepreneurs that are listening to us I think also you know um, there is you can't beat relationships and community you know people buy from people they know like and trust and I think that is uh, the best business advice I've gotten and that's also the way I try to run my own company. Uh, often I, I joke about I'm collecting good people. Uh, and and uh, I've done that for many years. And, uh, and I find interface really falling nicely into that picture for me. So I'm really actually grateful for, for, be, for having this opportunity to work with you. Thanks, John. We're, we are very much grateful to have you on board and you're a valued member of the community. We're really excited to see where this goes and how many more thousand leads you're going to get over the over the next the, the coming months and indeed the year and um we've got a lot planned for interface as wow. you know there's a lot of updates coming in the, in the coming months and i hope to see you use everything to yeah i, I, I will grow do, even I, more i will do that patrick and i and, and you know there is also some uh, peace of mind element for me here because mm-hmm. uh if i know that i have a process that works for instance uh, um, my interface flow. I know that I can turn that on and off, and I know that I can kind of say, okay, I'm now having a month or or five weeks of summer holiday coming in June and then into August, and I know that I can just switch the the the, the what do you call it, the, the pull the switch, put the switch in the other direction, 
and stop marketing it. And I also know that when I pick it up again in August, I know that I have something that works. So I'm really, really happy about that. That's fantastic. It's a, a plug and play lead generation system that you can basically turn on or off, works on autopilot. Turning off ad sets is another thing. I'm sure Krishna will give you some advice on that, but maybe uh, turn the budget down because sometimes the learning phase kind of dies it has to go back through its learning phase but i understand the need to take a break and not get call bookings in and your that's, calendar that's also well. a very important part of my aha because we are whole whole people living whole lives and and we need to find a balance in our work life and we need to find a balance in our the rest of our life and i'm not into work-life balance i'm into work-life integration or work-life uh, harmony because uh, we have one life and we have to take care of it and i'm now looking forward for a summer in my small island, the west of Norway, with wild sheep uh, running around and my vegetables and my boat and fishing and my soon-to-be eight grandchildren being wow. there. So, so, so I'm, um, I'm taking a good summer break, as I have done for many years. Yeah. Well, that sounds very relaxing. So we'll definitely have another catch-up after your island trip, and um, we'll see where things are at. So, John Livin. Thank you very much for the interview today. And I hope people enjoy tuning in. Thanks for sharing and being so open. I've been very candid about everything. I really appreciate your open, your openness and uh, your honesty. So thanks again, John. Likewise, uh, Patrick. And have a good summer. I'm looking forward to the continuation. Okay. Bye. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the interview with John as much as I did. A quick recap, if you're looking to build case studies, do research and get testimonials, use this process. Start off by asking them about their business or situation, usually before they started working with you, the fr frustrations, the problems and the challenges that they encountered. Then bridge into what it was like to work with you in detail, explore this in, an, in enough detail. And then fast forward to what life looks like afterwards, now that they've achieved success and implemented your solution. And that contrast is what creates an amazing testimonial or case study. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, in the next update, I'm going to be taking you into the back end and I'm going to be showing you some of the deep work that we're doing uh, inside our product, sales and marketing, how we're thinking, feeling and acting through that process. Um, I'm enjoying it. And, you know, I think a few weeks ago, we had these four big pieces and I was getting a little bit frustrated with myself, I have to say, in terms of how all of these four pieces come together. I understood at a very high level and at a broad level, but now that we're nearing completion on some of these items, the kind of the the glue that binds all of these things together and all of the detail that makes them merge and dovetail, that was looking a little bit blurry for me over the last few weeks. And that was creating a lot of internal frustration, I think, and turmoil. Um, we seem to have completed the 95% of what that last bit of glue is that binds all of these different projects together. I think we've cracked something and I'm going to show you how we've basically killed a few birds with one stone. As we say in Ireland, inside a small business, we don't have the luxury of having huge teams and huge funding. So we've created quite an elegant solution, I think, to a very complicated problem. So I'm going to show you that in the next update, what the complex problem was and how we crafted a very elegant solution that really solves multiple problems with just one thing. It's really elegant. Um, so I look forward to sharing that. I won't share any more today, but I'll see you inside the next update.